Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon Professor. How are you, Eva? I'm good. Um, good, good. How's everybody else? I see uh, Jamin here and Jorge, Mamadou and Zaid. Now, so I see uh, six people, uh, uh, five um, here in the Collaborate. And uh, let me check um, the forum. Also, I see five people in the forum. So I have matching number of people in both um, uh, both rooms. Now, um, excuse me, let me get some water. Okay, so um, uh, let's just you know uh, dive into uh, uh, today's um, today's exercise because in our last class we talked about uh, basically you know uh, um, how to solve for future value of annuity. But, um, we got uh, we we were kind of stuck where um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, uh, we tried out different scenarios. For example, um, when we, uh, for your graduate school fund, you know, uh, 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 we assumed $800 savings every month. Uh, so that's regular amount at regular interval uh, for five years. So that's you know annuity, and we um, we came to uh, and the future value of annuity was you know this, and we were still falling about four thousand dollars short, and we tried out different other uh, options, different other options like you know uh, increasing your monthly savings to uh, eight fifty. Still, uh, this was the closest. This was the closest, but um, uh, still uh, falling about seven hundred dollars short. And then, you know, um, uh, if you if we can find a uh, um, higher interest rate, a bank with higher interest rate, um, then you know we're still about you no know, uh, one hundred and thirty dollars short. Uh, I mean, one thousand. I'm sorry, thousand three hundred, about one thousand three hundred dollars or two hundred dollars short. Um, and then, you know, uh, uh, if we extend our timeline to six years, then we'll have, you know, more than we'll overshoot the target. I mean, it doesn't hurt, but then you have to uh, wait one more year. So uh, either way, um, it is all. Everything we have tried was um, trial and error method, right? Um, in other words, iterated. We iterate the same process with different inputs until we find the right answer. But then, you know, it's going to take a lot of time. I mean, when we um, uh, when we increased our savings by eighty uh, fifty dollars, then we were close, but still about $700 short. Uh, so then, you know, we can think about, oh, how, how, how about it if we raise it to uh, 860? Maybe 860 will, will be able to make it. But then uh, if you try 860, right, you will see uh, we will overshoot it slightly. We'll overshoot it slightly. Uh, then you know we can narrow down. We can narrow down. Uh, 
we can narrow down the uh, margin. In other words, uh, then it must be uh, greater than 850, but less than 860, right? If you try, think about it, try uh, 860. Yeah, we're two dollars, we're two dollars above it. Um, again, that's that's roughly enough. I mean, you know, uh, that's that's enough. But then that's not the target. Uh, we want precision. We want precision shot. Not you know. Uh, uh, I mean, this is already good enough. But you know, we want precision shot. What should and then uh, we know it is above 850 but below 860 so try out 859 or but doing this this is called you know trial and error method okay understand um, uh, you will have to reiterate it you will have to reiterate it over and over until you find the uh, right um, uh, right dollar amount well, you can also try that with, you know, the interest rate, right? Uh, so with 8% interest rate, we're still falling short. Maybe we'll try out 10%. Maybe 10% will be um, more than enough. Yeah. So then the answer would be below uh, greater than 8%, right? But less than 10%. So then we try out 9%. Oh, oh try nine still we're above so we can come to a conclusion oh so it must be between eight and nine but again all of this think about it all of this is just you know uh, too time consuming because uh, the, the trial and error method is bound to be time consuming and it's not scientific to do it that way but you know we can uh, well, the point is, we want to be efficient. We don't want to waste, you know, squander time um, by trial and error. So then, how do we nail it? We can nail, so for example, here, I've been telling you so many times that no matter how complex the equation may look on the surface, right? On the outside, it may look very complex, but the key to solving any equation is uh, by identifying z equals x times y structure, right? And once we can, once we identify that, then you know if x is the unknown, all you need to do is z divided by y. And here, this formula, future value of annuity equals payment times, you know, one plus R raised to N minus one over R. This is already presenting itself in Z equals X times format. Isn't that right? The future, FBA is Z, payment is X, and the rest of them is Y, right? And because and you might wonder, isn't payment part of the uh, numerator? Uh, yes and no. Uh, first, why? If you multiply something to a fraction, right? If y is the fraction, right? Uh, anyway, that x will be multiplied to the numerator only, right? So basically, you can separate it like, you know, x and, uh, you know, 1 plus this part is y, okay? And then x is our unknown the payment, right? So then what do we do? We do z divided by y. The payment is z, right, FBA divided by y. But you all know dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the uh, reciprocal, reciprocal, right, of that fraction. So therefore, you know, uh, the thing, this is the thing in the bracket, right? The dot is the thing in the bracket, which is, you know, uh, uh, this fraction. Reciprocal, 
of that fraction will be r over 1 plus r raised to n minus 1. Right? So then we use, this is the formula. Then we use that formula. So here, uh, we'll find it now. So uh, let's start with the equal sign. FBA times R. Uh, we'll find R later because it's blank now. Uh, it won't, you won't see anything here. But once we um, enter these, you know, uh, once we find these, you no, know, of course it's going to be 0.5 percent and 60. Uh, it's going to automatically uh, take care of. It. So open parenthesis. Open, you know, parenthesis. That's R to N minus one. And the clo close out of parenthesis. Okay. All right. And if you are nothing will nothing will show there because there is nothing here. But once we find so the. Uh, <clears throat> E7 divided by 12, of course, that's going to give us 0.5%, right? And then uh, 5 times 12 will give you 61. Then once we have this, we automatically get that, right? So <clears throat> now, finally, um, we nailed it. We nailed exact. We nailed the exact um, monthly payment. And remember, when we tried out 860, we just overshot it by about two dollars. So we were very uh, we were very close. It's something close to uh, 860. Therefore, 859.97. That's almost you know 860. And we exactly nailed 60k. Okay, so everyone is good with that, everyone? Um, any questions? Any questions so far? Not for me. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> I trust you. And how about the rest of the... Uh, what about the rest of the uh, class? The, uh, is there any question? Did you all get the same number? Did you all get the same number? Okay, 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 good, good. Now, we'll just try out just another example here. Now we have a uh, same target future value, but the interest rate is 7.5. And timeline is six years, six years, but you know, uh, compounding frequency M is quarterly. M is quarterly, right? Then um, what do we do? Uh, first, you know, we'll need to uh, we'll need to fill in these, you know, uh, intermediate calculations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and 7.5% divided by oh, M. Excuse me, Professor. Are you showing your yeah. screen? We can't really see anything. Oh, I'm, am I not sharing my screen? How come? Nope. Oh. Oh. All right. I'm sorry about that. I. Jesus. And how come? Two people said they had no problem. Huh? What is that? L M F A O A O A O. Hmm? What is that? It's laughing. That's, that's, that yeah. means laughing. <laughs> uh, Jorge, you said all good for now. And. Uh, you are not following. All right. Um, uh, sorry. 
So what I, what I was, oh, okay, so let's do this all, all over again. You need to have this file in front of you. And of course, last time you downloaded, right? You downloaded this file. So you must have it there. Okay, so here, um, all this time, I was just, you know, uh, like <clears throat> shouting in the uh, hollow key. All right. So this is uh, this is what I was talking about. Um, uh, but you know, um, I can't redo this because that's that's gonna take time. Uh, you check out the recording of today's session because I you know went over uh, this part. So now the formula for payment, right? is uh, but before we do that we'll need to uh, have this filled in right but if you um so um we know periodic rate is you know um six divided by 12 so 0 0.5 percent actual number of compounding n is 60 because five times five times 12. so using that formula right and the discussion was, you know, uh, how to derive you know, from this, from this uh, to this. Okay. So uh, we're gonna, uh, oops, uh, multiply the FBA by R over divided by open parenthesis, open another one, one plus. R is two N minus one. Okay, and hit enter. You got eight fifty nine point nine seven. So, do you have this in front of you? You need to have this file in front of you, and you you need to work this work this out with me. Otherwise, you know, uh, you don't have. Uh, you don't have another chance, and you don't get the uh, hang of it. You won't get the hang of it. Uh, minimize the rhythm, okay. And then, um, just to do the, uh, just as um, a second exercise, right? Uh, in this case, um, the same target future value, 60K, APR is 7.5% now. Timeline is six years, and the compounding is quarterly this time. So um, we found that the uh, um, quarterly rate is that, uh, and uh, actual number of compounding will be 24, and that's obvious. That times uh, P times N, and there you go. Now we... Um, Uh, I can copy this formula and paste it here, uh, but you know, just you know, then uh, you will never get the hang of it. So just just to uh, just uh, so that you will get the hang of it, let's do this from the scratch. So um, it's a future value of annuity FVA times R rate. Divided by open parenthesis and another one, open another one, and then one plus R close parenthesis is two and minus one and close parenthesis. Okay, and then we got it. So it's uh, then two thousand and two dollars. 52 cents, that's the, the exact payment. Now, our next question is then, uh, these, uh, look at these blanks. These blanks are basically rate and uh, N, N periods. Um, <clears throat> so think about it. Um, 
for any equation, I mean, for, for, an, equa for an equation with X number of variables, right? In our case, we have four variables, right? Uh, because each variable can be the unknown. And if is something we already know. If future value is the unknown, then the formula is, right, payment. Oh, come on. This thing is really... Okay. Payment times... One plus uh, uh, it takes too much time for me to draw that, but you know, you know what I'm. One plus r raised to n minus one over r, right? And then for payment, we solve this the same equation for payment. Uh, and then there are t also um, payment can be the unknown, r can be the unknown, n can be the unknown, right? So if those are the unknowns, then uh, how do we solve for it? So here's the, uh, I'm gonna just throw the, uh, the formula at you. So for N, right, this is the uh, formula to find N. Of course, we need to use natural law. And some people get, <clears throat> some people just get daunted by this. This is a very daunting uh, task to, uh, so, uh, you know, they got, you know, uh, scared and so, and they asked me, you know, Professor, do I have to memorize all that? Do we have to memorize? What do you have to memorize? Huh? Look, um, anybody, anybody who has, you know, um, uh, anybody who knows something about algebra would know that this is the conclusion, right? This part is the conclusion. What, whatever comes before it is just a process, right? The steps of derivation. But then some students have no idea, and then they just, you know, uh, uh, panic and, you know, ask me. Uh, uh, they think it's everything is the formula. No. And if you ever, you know, uh, want to memorize, this is the only thing that you need to memorize. This is... Conclusion is the only thing to memorize, right? Now think about it. Um, do you, does anybody recognize, does anybody recognize these three dots? Does anyone know what these three dots mean? Hmm? Anyone? Of all these people, no one knows. What three dots? What are you talking about? What three dots? These three dots. This one. Oh, um, I, I forgot. Wait. That means, um, one second. Too, too much time. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, I'm afraid we don't have the luxury of time. Go ahead, uh, Professor. I'm sorry. I don't remember. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Well, uh, that means there are four, right? There are four. Thus, there are four. I mean, through all these steps of derivation, think about it. First of all, 
we start out with this, you know, uh, a base formula for annuity, future value of annuity. And then, you know, uh, uh, we need to uh, find N, but, you know, there is no way you can isolate N only, right, at the, uh, to start with. So what do you do? You will need to isolate whatever you can first, right? So then you divide both sides by payment. So the right, uh, left-hand side will be FBA over payment, and the left-hand side will lose payment because it's going to, it's going to get canceled, gets canceled out. And then uh, the right-hand side has R, so you mu multiply both sides by R, and you know R cancels out here, and the left-hand side will have R, right? And then the right-hand side will have only 1 plus R raised to N minus 1. And then uh, I need to isolate uh, 1 plus R to the N because you cannot go directly to N. So then what? You know, uh, uh, move 1 to the other side. In other words, you know, plus 1 on each side. Right? Plus 1 on both sides. So left-hand side will become this. Right-hand side becomes this. Now, by taking the natural law, right, we can turn the right side into a uh, x times y structure. Now the whole thing is now z equals x times y structure. Now then solving for n is easy. Uh, divide this, you know, by, right, z divided by y. <clears throat> so then, you know, after this then, you say thus, thus, right? So then, you know, when you see those three dots, then that means, you know, uh, uh, after that, that's the conclusion, right? Let me ask you another question. So, um, the, uh, those three dots, that's therefore. Then what are these, um, what's this inverted, inverted three dots? Inverted triangle, right? What does that what does that mean? Bracket buddy. Hmm? Diva, did you say something? I'm sorry. No, I had dropped my phone and I hit my foot. Sorry. All righty. So uh, anybody else? Anybody? Anybody can tell me what those inverted three dots? Inverted three dots mean? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Everyone is so quiet. I'm not even. Uh, okay, so um, now if these triangular, triangular shaped dot, three dots means therefore or thus, then the inverted uh, three dots mean because or since. Okay, since or because. All right. Those, you know, if you know algebra, I mean, basically, it seems like that's a rare, rare commodity these days. Knowing algebra, knowing math, is almost like a rare commodity. Um, <clears throat> for for many people, doing math means just punching in the numbers. No, number crunching is not math. Logical process is the math. If you have the logical process, then number crunching comes later because all you need to do is just plug in the number into the, that logical process. Right? I've been telling you over and over, it's the mechanism that matters. And if you can build that mechanism, right, numbers are just input data. You just feed the input data into that mechanism right and comes out the result and these days you know that logical process right which is you know uh, um, captured by which is you know well very well uh, captured by algebra has become almost like a you know a very rare commodity So anyway, um, 
So that's the formula for n. And what about what about r? What about how do we find r? Uh, unfortunately, there is no single unique mathematical process. There is no single unique mathematical process to find R in, in you know, a multiple cash flow model. Uh, so traditionally, they used this trial and error method, re iterative process. But again, finding, uh, finding the solution through trial and error or, you know, iterative process is very inefficient, time consuming, and not very scientific. Uh, if worse comes to worst, you'll have to do it that way. But then uh, when you reiterate the process over and over, that's what the computers do well, that's, and that's what the computers are built for. Remember, uh, <clears throat> human brain cannot process like, you know, uh, uh, in a split second, you know, uh, how many uh, computations, you know, uh, can human brains process? No, not, not much. But the computers can execute or perform thousands of uh thousands of you know calculations in a split second because it's, you know as long as it's a reiterative process uh, what the computer will do is it, it will plug in you know uh, different other numbers until it finds the uh, right solution <clears throat> right if it finds the solution at the first process at the first cycle then it will stop and output the uh, result but if, uh, if not, it will run the loop again, right? And if it finds it, it will stop there. If not, run the third loop. If not, run the fourth loop. You know, all these, you know, uh, basically, that's the algorithm. Algorithm is, you know, uh, making the computer run the process iteratively over and over until it finds the solution. And the computer can execute it like, you know, uh, thousands of times in a split second. So therefore, um, we will use the, uh, uh, for rate, we will use the uh, uh, the built-in formula, right? And the computer is in a built-in uh, function. So now let's do this. Um, so as I said, uh, because, you know, I forgot to, uh, um, show the screen <laughs> you missed all this but um, to do this you will have all of these highlighted cells uh, cleaned out you need to clear out all the highlighted cells right but we, we uh, you know uh, I can't redo that because we're already you know that part is done uh, that part is already over we can't you know uh, dwell on that too much uh, All right. So next, uh, then let's find out um, how many how many years it would, uh, will it take? How many years it will take? And we know it's going to take five years, or sixty quarters. I mean, I, I, in sixty months, sixty months. So, uh, <clears throat> but then we'll confirm, we'll verify and confirm that. So we'll use this formula, right? And the formula for uh, the formula for n is this natural law of f e over payment times r plus one, right? Divided by <coughs> uh, one. Uh, so uh, first. Natural law of, I want you to do this together with me. Don't, please don't squander this time doing, you know, uh, uh, something else. Work, work this out with me, okay? 
So it's the natural log of future value, which is in G9. Okay, and if you can't click it in, just type it in because <clears throat> the formula is hanging above, the formula is hanging over it. And you can't click it in. Then what do you do? You'll have to, uh, you know, uh, just type it in. And then, right, times R. The R is here. It's not filled in. So later, I'm going to fill it in later. But it, it should be, it must be filled in to begin with. Okay. Uh, and uh, divided by natural log of one plus r, which is here, right? So for no, it's not gonna <clears throat> it's not gonna produce anything because the uh, input data is missing. But at least you know we're building the formula there. Okay, it says you know it cannot process it, but we know um, all we need to do is uh, when we do that, right? When we uh, plug in the input data, uh, I didn't plug it in, you know, I actually calculated it, right? As I said, uh, always, unless it is the uh, initial input data, uh, you need to calculate it. Otherwise, you know, uh, you need to uh, make Excel calculate it, right? <clears throat> So uh, we got that. So it's going to take 60 months. But, you know, if we, uh, that's not the final answer because the final, uh, the question is normally asking how many years will it take? It's not going to, questions are not going to uh, be asking for how many months. We'll just ask how long will it take or how many years will it take? So then we convert 60 months into a year. How do we do that? We divide it by m right and it's going to give us exactly five years okay so everyone is okay with this hmm? everyone now next question is you know uh, uh find the rate we know already it's you know uh 0 0.5 percent per month or you know six percent a year but let's verify that let's verify <clears throat> and confirm so Actual number of compounding will be 60. We all know that because it's 5 times 12, 5 times 12. So as I said, we use you know, Excel's built-in function. So we go to uh, uh, this you know, f of x, which is a you know, function. And then if you have most uh, recently used it, it will show up on the most recently used um, a headline or, or category. If not, you got to go to the financial category. And since I have recently used rate, it, it's uh, it's there. It comes up. So hit OK and give it what it's asking for. N periods. So you give it N, right? N periods. Payment. We have payment there. You have to uh, enter it as negative. You need to enter it as negative because it's cash outflow, right? Because it's a cash out. There is no pay, uh, present value because this is not a single cash flow model. It's multiple cash flow model. So there's no single cash flow uh, uh, present value or principle, right? We'll leave it blank. And future value, future value is this. And then type. Uh, type means, uh, <clears throat> type means, you know, uh, whether it is ordinary annuity or annuity due. If it is ordinary annuity, and by default, the default is ordinary annuity. I've been telling you, default is always ordinary. Now think about it.
ordinary means default. That's why it is ordinary. That's why it is ordinary, right? Ordinary is default. Um, and if it is default, you leave it blank or enter zero, right? Zero is blank anyway. Blank is zero. You don't, you don't even need to uh, enter anything. Um, if it is annuity due, you enter one. But unless, unless specifically mentioned in the problem, right, the problem will uh, specifically state that if it is, you know, uh, um, annuity due, it will state that the payment is made at the beginning of each period, right? And that's the cue. That's the cue that it is uh, annuity due. Okay, but unless there is any you know, specific mention, then by default, everything is ordinary. Okay, ordinary. So um, we'll leave it blank because it is ordinary. Guess, we don't even need to guess. It already gave us 0 0.005, which is, you know, then uh, you hit enter. There you go, 0 0.5. Now, uh, let's go to the next example. And in the next example, um, uh, let's start with the uh, uh, rate first. So, of course, N will be 24 because it's uh, five years times four, right? I mean, six years times four. And then we use rate command. You can just copy this, but you know, uh, let me copy. Uh, nah, nah, I'll just, uh, you can just copy and paste because it's the same formula you got. Nah. But you know, let me do it from the scratch. So, click formula, rate, and periods, there you go, 24, payment, I always enter payment as negative because it's cash outflow, right? Cash outflow. And then uh, future value, there you go. Type, leave it blank, right? Because it's ordinary annuity. There is there's no mention that this, you know, uh, is annuity due. Default is ordinary. And I told you, um, if it is and you already do, you enter one, okay? Now we got that. Uh, now, one question here. So why do you put one, why do you Why do you think we have to put one for and you do? Anybody? Hmm? Anybody listening? Why do we put one why do we put one for anybody do? Hmm? Eva, your microphone was on. Uh, your mic, your mic was on. Did you have something to say? Yeah, you said why do we put one? Uh huh? You said why, why do, do we put one? one? Yeah, but that's not the complete. Why do we put one for what? Huh? Why do we put one for what? Well, I said we need to put one for annuity due, but you know, put nothing or zero for ordinary annuity. But so my question was, why do we put one for uh, annuity due? Mm -hmm. Ashley, are you there, Ashley? Ashley, I'm here. Okay, Ashley, uh, do you have any idea why we put one in that for Excel's, you know, uh, Excel formula? Why do we put one for? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Do? Okay, how about you, Dexton? Dexton, are you there? Dexton? Edgar, are you there, Edgar? 
Edgar, Ethan, are you there, I'm Ethan? Here, I'm here. Okay, Edgar, Edgar do you, do you, did you understand the question? Did you uh, understand the question? Not really. Come on. <laughs> Pay attention. Huh? Jamming, are you there, Jamming? Jamming? I'm here. Okay, Jamming. Did you understand the question? No. How come? How come? You know, <laughs> you're not listening, huh? You're not paying attention, huh? Jorge, did you understand the question, Jorge? Are you there? Mamadou? Are you yeah, there, I mean, Mamadou? I didn't, yeah, I didn't quite okay. see the question like that. Run a little bit. Out of out of all these people, there are ten people. And uh, Peter, are you there, Peter? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Did you understand the question? You said, "Why do we put one in the beginning of the equation?" I didn't. I didn't get to see the equation actually. No, 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 no. It's not the equation, but uh, look in the Excel. Um, In the Excel's built-in function, right? Let me do this again. Right, right. N period, which is you know uh, uh, F12, right? Okay. And then payment. Here's the payment. Oh, we gotta enter it as negative. There's this cash outflow and future value. There's the future value. And in here, type, right? I said in type, right? Um, you put one for annuity due, but you put zero or leave it as blank for ordinary annuity. So why? Why do we put one for annuity due? Because that was that's the mm -hmm. the beginning of the the beginning of the period. Yeah, it, it's it's related to that. It's related to that, of course. But you know, um, uh, the answer is uh, how many uh, I've. I've emphasized this so many times. Huh? Look, uh, the difference between the, uh, this is ordinary annuity and this is the uh, annuity due. And the difference between the two is nothing but nothing, no other than, nothing other than just one more compounding. You understand? Um, I, I think look, I follow you. I follow you now. I see what you're saying. You're saying basically. Yeah, yeah. It's over the course of the years, so each year it compounds more. Right, right. The first deposit in the ordinary annuity uh, gets compounded only n minus one times. I mean, every uh, only four times, right? Right over five-year timeline, right? And the second one gets compounded only three times, right? Three times. Third one, two times. Fourth one, just once. The last one doesn't get any compounding, right? It doesn't get any com any compounding. But the uh, in the annuity due, the first one gets compounded exactly uh, five times, exactly n times. The second one gets you know uh, compounded four times or n minus one. Uh, third one n minus two. So in other words, the difference between the uh, um, Ordinary annuity and the uh, uh, annuity due is just one more compounding, right? That one means one more compounding. Some people say, you know, they get, some people say, oh, it, there's one more payment. No, they are grossly, grossly uh, confused. They totally don't understand. It's not one more, it's not one more payment. There's no one more payment. The number of payments are all the same. Isn't that right? Five payments, five payments. But the number of compoundings are different. Number of uh, annuity due has one more compounding. 
So that's what it means here, right? In this formula, right? Uh, I'll have to, uh, uh, if you use, you know, in that type, right? Uh, I can't, uh, let me bring up that box again, dialog box. So here, right? If you use rate command, um, here for type, right? Uh, for ordinary annuity, you leave it blank. For annuity due, put one, and that one means there's one more compounding. Okay, um, and um, also ordinary is default, right? Unless otherwise stated, assume ordinary all the time. Now, the other, you know, the second uh, example, and the second example, finding n, uh, just to get the hang of it, uh, just to get the hang of the formula, right? Uh, natural law of FBA over payment times R. R, you know, is 1.88, but um, that needs to be filled in before we uh, build the formula. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's okay. Uh, after building the formula into it, we can still um, uh, you know, fill in that later. So, time plus one. Divided by natural log, ah, natural log of uh, one plus r. Of course, it's not going to show you anything, right? Because this cell is missing. But you know, we can we can do it easily. Um, once you divide APR by m, we get the quarterly rate. So uh, we get 24, which is the uh, you know uh, total number of quarters, and then we convert it into years. We turn it into years. So we divide that you know uh, n by m, and we get exactly six years. Also in row 12, we got the month. We got the quarterly rate of 1.88, which is the uh, uh, the quarterly rate, so we um, all we need to do is just multiply it by four multiply it by four and uh, uh, I mean now multiply uh, multiply it by four, yeah. And then because we're trying to find APR, then we get exactly 7.5. Okay, so any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Ah, oh, looks like um, this is a very difficult class. I mean, you know, <laughs> for me to conduct because uh, I, I can't see any face or any re reaction or response. Uh, it's almost like I'm just, you know, uh, shouting into a hollow cave. But it's very, it's getting so difficult. Drop uh, something. <laughs> So you want us to start coming to class and show our video so it can make it so you can feel better? Because uh, you're not on video either. We don't see, we see a picture of you. Yeah, you can. Well, you don't have to show video. You can, you know, uh, you can put also a profile picture. At least oh, profile picture. More... How do you do that? Yeah. I don't know how to do that on Collaborate. Uh, I think you... you, you you see here my settings. Do you see my settings? Yeah. Always the gear icon, you know, and if you see a gear icon, it's something that has to All right, well, that's me right now, Professor. Hello. And then, you know, you will see, you know, there's a pencil that means you can edit it, right? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll I, work with you today. Yeah, oh, okay. 
oh, uh, you're on camera now then, right? But you I'm can, about to turn it off. I just wanted to show you, that's all. Oh, no, 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 no problem, no problem. I mean, um, the, uh, I just need to, uh, I just need the confirmation of uh, your, you know, presence or your- Wait, presence. professor, okay. so, so we have to, right. we have to come into school and we need to get like some vaccination form because I got something in the mail about that, about the vaccination. Oh, yeah, 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 Dexton, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look. Uh, whether I, I, I posted something about that, I posted something to that effect. Um, because this is coming from the registrar and coming from the uh, provost office. Uh, COVID nineteen. Look, uh, please read it. Look, you don't have. You don't have to come to school to to show the proof of vaccination. You can upload it on uh, CUNY first. But I can okay? just come to school anyway and show them like on my phone like a vaccine confirmation thing, right? No, 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 no. Look, it has to be on on the it, it has to be on their system. So if you show it to them, then what? You have to do it every time. It will it will. I mean, it's only going to be. We have trouble uploading it. We can't just go to the school and let them take a picture or let them put it in the system themselves. Yeah, can I just like? It's just a one-time thing. I mean, I'm not going every day. Just like this one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's right. That's right. But you know. Um, Did you get your second system. shot? Because the registers are saying that we have to have, we have to have, we have to be fully vaccinated. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have, you need to have, you need to have taken the second shot. Yeah, they said we have to have both shots at least and uploaded by the 14th or the 13th before we take our final. Right, right, right. We're taking the final in the school? No, 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 no. You don't have, look. We will have to meet once. We will have to meet once. Okay? We'll have to meet once per semester, at least once. So I have set the last day of class. I have set the last day of class for uh, one face-to-face -face class, the one and the last final face-to-face -face class. Look, I posted everything here, and all it takes is this reading. Okay, and uh, then that way. I know I'm ready to do the face, face thing in school, but like those vaccine, this vaccine, like forms and all that, like it's like, it's like a lot of work. I just want to just show them that, like you know, on my phone or whatever. Uh, I'm vaccinated and just, you know, do it from there because this is a whole long process with this form. Who do you, who, listen, who do you show the form to? I mean, when you are entering school, you will be showing the form to the uh, security. And w what is the security? Is security, the, uh, is the security personnel, there will be a security guard. But will the security guard, is he in the position of uploading your, does he have any, you know, uh, scanner to upload your, and it's your personal information, so you are respond. You're responsible for your personal information. You understand? If you want them to upload it for you, then you will have to take it to the registrar. So that will be a very, you know, uh, think about it. Just to come into school just for once on the last day, right? Are you gonna come to the building where the registrar is and at, have them? Upload it for you, and then come to the building where the uh, class is, you know, being held. At this point, the way I'm feeling, the way I feel like I was, I was forced to be vaccinated. Yes, let them do the work for me. I had to go get vaccinated, so yeah, upload my card for me. That's how I'm feeling. Well, uh, yeah, well, well, then you know, that's up to you. I mean, you can go, you can go. That's a lot of trouble, first, of, you know, in the first place, because if then you will have to go to the registrar in person. You will have to go to the registrar and submit your you know vaccination have them scan in scan it and upload it and then come to the building where the class is being held that's you know double trouble but you know you can upload it from your home right without all that hassle just upload it from your home from your computer right um there will be um 
I mean, you can just, you know, uh, take a picture of it or scan it and, you know, just, you know, uh, I think I mm -hmm. might have met the deadline. Is it too late to do that? No, 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 no. You can do it until the last day of class. And the last day of class is December 13th. But if you okay. don't, why are you not doing it now? Our class, you, your great, your thing is considered WA. So it's like you're dropped from this class right now. Are you? I'm are from you? this class. It says WA. That's why I told you that, that they told me to talk to you to let you know that I'm still going to come to class, do my work. And once everything is set up, then you just put my no, rate back. Well, that WA may show. I didn't see WA, uh, you know, uh, on the roster because I checked. I checked the uh, roster. And I didn't see any WA. I saw some W's and WNs. W's are basically. Can you can you can you uh, 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 mute yourself? Uh, Sorry. To cut cut down on the uh, background noise. Uh, W's are withdrawals. You know, some people withdrew voluntarily, right? By their you know uh, own you know. Uh, own volition by their own will they withdrew but i haven't seen so i've seen some w's but i haven't seen any wa on my roster but if if you see wa i didn't see wa in your you know um uh, in this class or in any of my classes but if they if you see wa uh it's just temporarily like that when you it will be permanent if you don't if you don't upload proof of vaccination. It will be permanently like that. Uh, it will be permanent. But if you show proof of vaccination, if you upload it, it will be in the system, and then WA will be gone. You will get you know whatever work you have uh, submitted. Based on that, your grade will be. Uh, I will calculate as long as you can look. You got W, you're saying, Eva, you're saying you got WA, but you know, if it is really, if w, listen, if, it, if you really got WA or if you're dropped from the class, you don't have any access to uh, Blackboard anymore, but you have access to Blackboard, you have access to uh, the class, you have access to the collaborate session, that means you're still active. Right? You're active. Okay, well, active. listen, I'm not going to fight it. I'm, I'm, I'm active then, but. Yeah, yeah, you're techni technically you're active, right? So, um, and I didn't see any WA in the roster, in any of my roster, class rosters, okay? But listen, the idea is, uh, look, whether you come to the class in person on the last day or not, and for you, your last day, because last day, uh, December 13th is Monday, December 13th is Monday. So that's not your class. Your class last, your last class is uh, December 9th. So on December 9th. Hey, professor, um, what happens if you don't come to the in-person or whatever the face-to-face? -face? Well, I, I, I was getting, I was getting there. Look, you, you can choose to uh, be absent on that day, right? You can choose to be absent. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean it exonerates you from that doesn't mean it exonerates you from uploading, uh, from that duty of uploading your um, uh, proof of vaccination. Because without the proof of vaccination, WA will be permanent and you will be dropped from the class and there will be no grade that can be, you know, uh, WA is already assigned there, so there can be no grade. So you can get vaccinated and... Uh, uh, upload the proof of vaccination, but choose to be absent on that day, on that particular day. Especially if you haven't, if you have attended all the classes so far, if you have never missed any class, you're entitled to one absence, right? And exercise that entitlement, exercise that you know uh, uh, entitlement on the last day. I mean, you know, not a problem. And I already, um, and most likely, um, uh, it is already built in there. You know, my, my in the announcement, uh, it is already built in there. It will just be triggered on the uh, scheduled date. So you will get, uh, in the last week, uh, 
not not the last week, like first week of December, you will get an announcement about that. Right? It is. I have already built it in there. Everything is pre-built. Okay, so that um, uh, the message about whether you can, you know, uh, choose to be absent on that day or not, that message will go out. It's just not, it's already pre-built in here, but it's, it will need to be triggered on the scheduled date, right? Now, that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to do all of that. I'm going to like upload my, my thing or whatever, but like, I have a question. Like, what about the people like who like choose not to get the vaccine so they can't upload it? Does that mean they're just doomed? Yeah, then yeah, they are doomed. Yeah, they are doomed. I'm sorry to, I just, I just you know, uh, um, took your uh, expression. They are doomed. You know, in other words, you know, uh, then they will be uh, dropped. I mean, they will get W A, because this is not only a CUNY policy, but it's also a New York State policy. Right, and CUNY being the state school, um, you say, oh, CUNY is state school, isn't it city school? Uh, it's state and city, you know, uh, city and the state both, because you know funding comes from the state and the city. Uh, CUNY must also abide by the uh, uh, New York State rules and policies. So, um, it's you know. Um, if that's the policy, you have to abide by it. You have to abide by it. Okay. So here, um, I already it's already built in there. Last, uh, yeah, yeah, where is it? I just saw it. Last day of class. Look, it's not it's it's not showing at your end because you know this this will be this will be going out on December second. And I explained there. I've been telling you, it's all pre-built. I'm not someone who is just doing it there, you know, on you know, um, on the spot, impromptu. I mean, everything takes a lot of careful and meticulous planning and meticulous scheduling. Okay? So, um, uh, everything is pre-built. This is a, uh, you know, um, uh, like, you know, I built this system, you know, like an immaculate machine. So, every, you know, something gets, you know, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, it's like timed, you know, the clock, uh, it's timed. So, it will get triggered at the scheduled date, and then it goes out. So, um, also the, uh, I believe the, uh, uh, is the uh, uh, quiz two instruction has the quiz two instruction gone out? I believe no, maybe not. There is no uh, quiz two instruction is supposed to go out. Oh, it, it was already posted November twelfth, so you must have got it, right? Yeah. Uh, well, last question, uh, Professor. I noticed that you haven't really been like I don't know posted homework and stuff like that. Does that mean like this final is gonna like really like carry some significant weight? Yeah. Because like you haven't been really posting any. Yeah, I've been telling you. Um, you. No, no, listen. The homework, the homeworks are, homeworks are uh, automatically, homeworks automatically get um, triggered on the scheduled date on Connect. That was already you know. Um, no. Um, but listen. The semester grade is based on the uh, four exams, quiz one, midterm, quiz two, and final. And I've been telling you from the day one, it's the weighted average. It's the weighted average of, of these four um, tests. Okay, so midterm, uh, so let me. So this. It's opening. I hope it is opening. And this one is posted in the assignments. I mean, if, if you go to the assignments, you would know it is posted there. Quiz one and midterm results with the attendance as of November 4th. I don't know if you have noticed it or not, but after each exam, 
It's there. I post it there. And then, yeah, it's opening. So here, um, and I've been telling you, it's the it's exactly the weighted average of quiz one, midterm, quiz two, and final. And the weight is 20% on quiz one and quiz two. 20%, 20%, midterm and final, 25%, 25%. So that's 90%. And the remaining 10% comes from your attendance and participation. I've been telling you this over and over, multiple times. And your participation can count more than 10%, right? Why? Uh, every attendance, every presence is counted as 1.67. But if you give me, I've been telling you, if you give me a good answer, you get 0 0.5 average answer, 0 0.25. If you give me a great answer, you get one point. Think about it. If you gave me 20 great answers throughout the semester, or 10 great answers, that's already 10 points. Already 10 points. And with the attendance, uh, if you made perfect attendance throughout the uh, uh, entire semester, you'll get five points. The sum of all those 1.67 will, will add up to uh, uh, five points. So that's going to be 25 points already. I mean, uh, 15 points already. Right? If you give me uh, 20 great answers, that's 20 points plus, you know, per perfect attendance of five, 25. That's even, you know, uh, that's a uh, game changer then. You understand? Uh, for example, let's say you missed, you didn't do midterm. And if you didn't do the midterm, but from the uh, uh, attendance, let's say you, you got, you know, like uh, 25 points from attendance, that more than that takes care of it, you know, more than enough. You know, I mean, uh, missing entire missing 25 points, 25 percent of that, you know, midterm is more than made up, more than made up for by the uh, uh, participation points and attendance. Okay, and also as for the, um, let me show you. Um, Homeworks are chapter problems on Connect, and I've been telling you uh, the homeworks are automatically assigned by schedule. Okay? Homeworks are automatically assigned and uh, triggered by schedule. So, um, look. If you go into connect, right, everything is, look, all these chapter problems were scheduled, right? And how come I can't scroll down? Um, they should be able to. Automatically, they are automatically uh, assigned, right? Per schedule. So whatever are late, they are you know marked late. And uh, currently, chapter nine, chapter eight problems are uh, on. They are you know, chapter nine, chapter eight problems are on. Chapter ten, not yet. No, you see these padlocks. The locks mean you know the lock icon means they are not yet ready. They are not yet. Um, if, credit, start on November, third, right? like if you do work on connect that's late, you don't get any credit, right? Uh, you will, if it is not too late, look, there is like, you know, a uh, 5% uh, late penalty per day late. So anything that is more than 20 days late, uh, even if you, yeah, it, yeah, even if you get, you know, all of them right, you don't get, you don't earn any points. But anything within the range, for example, uh, even if this is late, how, how many days are late? Uh, uh, the last due November 12th. Uh, what's today? November 16th. You're only four days late. Then only, you know, 2%, um, uh, 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 I mean, you know, 5% uh, late. So 20%, the late penalty will be 20%. So whatever is in the uh, within the uh, range, so 
active range, you can still do that. You should do that because, and the uh, midterm is already um, uh, late, uh, but you can still do that. There was a late penalty, but that was due October 29th, no, October 31st. So it's more than, uh, it's not more than 20 days, but you know, um, quiz two is not active yet. That's why there's a lock icon there, right? It's going to be activated on November 19th. So the point is, if you do all of these chapter problems, then I will use I will use the weight uh, average of the uh, chapter problems, and also um, I will average everything. You know, there was you know uh, ROI practice quiz. Or there were two ROI practice quiz at the beginning of the semester. I will use average of all of them and use it to boost your lowest exam score. Okay? And if you are at risk of falling below B minus, then I will use it to boost your lowest exam score or uh, the missing uh, exam score. I will use it to replace the missing exam score. But if you are not at risk, you know, uh, uh, it will be just, you know, uh, uh, doing all these practice problems will definitely be good for you because that's going to make you uh, more uh, likely to get a better grade in the actual exams. So there's, so two, more, there's two more tests, mm -hmm. right? There's quiz two yeah. and there's the final, right? Yeah, there's quiz two and the final. And After quiz two, and this will be updated too. This statistics will be up. Summary statistic will be updated too. Okay. So you gotta watch out, right? Um, it will be, uh, you know, then uh, this file will be uh, updated. Okay. All right. So uh, oh, that's that's already you know uh, more than eight minutes uh, past. Uh, so if you have uh, no further questions. Um, well, uh, that's the day. Okay, I'll call it a day, and uh, uh, I will see you guys, you know, um, uh, on Thursday. Okay. All righty. So have a great afternoon, and uh, see you on Thursday. I'll stop sharing. All right, professor. All right, class. Have a good day. All right. You too. Take care, Ava. Uh, and I will stop.